I want to welcome you to the Meacham Conversations, and today we have Ann Fisherworth from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, what we've been doing is uh, starting off by having you read a poem, and we'll talk a little bit about that, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Okay. Well, this is a prose poem from my new book, which is called The Bunts of Winter Birds, and the poem is called Sister. Dead-Eyed Duke, they called her when she was a whack in Alabama. Today, driving by a shooting range here in the Ozarks, I thought of her. Not to brag or anything she told us way back in the 1960s, but your big sister is the best shot in her platoon. We were in awe of her. She had to make her bed so tight she could bounce a dime on the mattress. She had to wear white gloves and run her hands along the bureau. And once she had to swim fast to escape a water moccasin that came gliding from the pipe in the Fort McClelland pool. Then tonight at the restaurant, an old woman entered pushing a walker and a younger woman followed hanging onto the back of her pants to steady her. They sat down close to us. I watched them and remembered our sister less than a year ago like a shrunken little elf grinning up at us from her plate piled high with Thanksgiving dinner in the restaurant in Bend where snow blew in flurries outside. The next morning was the last time I saw her, and I knew it would be. I turned back from the front door of the house where they cared for her and went again to her room to give her one more kiss. She was just lowering herself from her walker into her chair. We found her journal in that freezing cold garage after her death. I took it and glanced at the first page, shocked at the savage, cutting words, thinking, who could say that about you? Until I realized she had written it about herself. I knew 30 years before she finally told our mother, and I knew why it just never took when she wore her teal blue dress and went on dates with nice men from church. Yet because she was so mm -hmm. private, I never could tell her, I love you just the way you are. So when I read in her journal about that woman who did not love her back, how she hated herself, despised herself for wanting that love, I was furious for her misery. Gentle sister, sweet sister, I say this now to her memory, just gentle sister, sweet sister. Well, that kind of discovery is just always so moving. Yeah, it was. Wow. Uh, a lot of your poems deal with people like that in different situations. And, uh, well, that's... So how did that come about? I mean, it well, must have been tough to write, too. Yeah, it was, a, it was tough to write, but also as a relief. My sister died about two years ago. She was my half-sister and a lot older than I was. Mm. And um, she was really, she was just a wonderful person, but pretty reclusive and a hoarder, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like a hoarder, like crazy, you know? So she lived in Bend, Oregon, mm -hmm. in a double wide. And um, mm -hmm. my little sister and I would fly out sometimes to see her and to kind of help her, you know, sort through things when yeah. she had to move into assisted living. And um, it was just precious to see her, but it's like, since I was so much younger and since we were in army families, so people were always moving around the world, sure, you yeah. know, I never really had a chance to get to know her um, that much, but you can love people. There's a beautiful, beautiful line in um, A River Runs Through It, where I think it's the older brother, it's in the film, says about the younger brother, you can love people completely without ever really knowing them, you know? Oh yeah. And I sort of feel that way about my big sister, uh -huh. whose name was Joan. I, I love her so much and loved her so much and never really had a chance to know her, you yeah. know. So this is part of a sequence of poems in my new book. Yeah. And I could never write about her until after she died, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, why prose poem? Oh, I like to write prose poems. Mm -hmm. um, I write all kinds of poems, mostly either free verse or prose poetry mm -hmm. or hybrid forms. But, you know, this has a strong narrative arc and um, it just worked better in prose paragraphs mm -hmm. than trying to worry about line breaks and so on, yeah. 
Is that generally how you distinguish with prose poems? It just kind of happens one way or another. It's yeah. like it feels right. It feels that you don't want to have to think about line breaks when you have, you know, a narrative to kind of get across and then you want the breathing space of yeah. a paragraph. So generally, I mean, not always. Recently I wrote kind of a long thing that was just a horrible poem, but it makes a great sort of prose essay, yeah. you know? Uh -huh. um, but generally the form <clears throat> kind of suggests itself. Yeah. Yeah, the whole idea of form, um, I know this is a conversation that's going on in CNF a lot, but um, it's a whole net question of genre seems to be, in some cases, really arbitrary. Yeah. I remember Jim Tate, somebody asked him once, those prosy things, he said, mm -hmm. they said, is that prose poem or poetry? And he said, well, it's writing. It's language, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's, yeah. um, it's kind of kind of crazy that way. Yeah. Um, I remember Charlie Simic once said that a, writing a prose poem is like trying to catch a fly in a dark room, but the fly might not be there, and the <laughs> prose poem is what happens when you bump into the furniture. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. I like that, yeah. But it captures the tone of it. I like it, that, you know? yeah. But I, I think it's amazing because a prose poem, you can go from really comic, funny things like mm -hmm. he does, a, a Strand does, to things that are really serious, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and really moving. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think I've probably written one funny poem in my life, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I agree. I like prose poetry yeah. a lot, and I like hybrid forms mm -hmm. a lot. Well, hi another hybrid form is sort of the ekphrastic poems, yeah. like you did with the yeah, yeah. Mississippi book, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which is amazing, those, those oh, photographs of the poems yeah, that go that with them. Fun. Talk a little bit about how that came about. Well, Maud Schuyler Clay is a well-known Delta photographer, mm -hmm. and I've known her for decades, just, you know, at square books or at parties or whatever. and. We would kind of bounce back and forth. Oh, hi, Maud, we should do something. Oh, hi, Ian, we should do something, mm -hmm. you know. So finally, I kind of pinned her down a few years ago, and I said, you know, if we're, time is ticking by, and if we're ever going to do this project, we should. So she just started sending me, by emails, mm -hmm. um, PDFs of photographs that she'd taken that she'd never done anything with. Huh. And um, I fell in love with some of them. And... It's like voices would just come through my head, you yeah. know, voices of mostly not myself, but mm -hmm. people in Mississippi, yeah. voices, different, different accents, different, you know, black mm -hmm. and white, old and young, rich and poor, educated mm -hmm. and not educated, rural and urban. And um, over the space of a couple of years, this book just kind of wrote itself, you know, so it's my, it's my homage to Mississippi orality because I've lived there for 30 years, but I wouldn't have dared do that without the intermediary force of yeah. those photographs that kind of gave me entree into these places in which people lived yeah. and told their stories. It kind of extends, you know, Whitman's idea of, you know, going down the rivers and, and uh, pulling all that stuff together, <laughs> yeah. and, and Twain even, too. I yeah. mean, it's kind of an extension of that yeah. and saying, like, yeah, they talked about it, and this is what it is. Yeah, and this know? is what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's really amazing. That book was so fun to write. Yeah. And that, then it was funny, it just stopped, you know? It's like when it got to be 47 poems, it just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any particular order that you wanted to? Well, the order came kind of naturally. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to begin with um, some sort of really serene kind of opening. This mm -hmm. is opening a magic kingdom, yeah. you know, between two worlds. The soul floats. That's mm -hmm. the first line of the yeah. first poem. And then to end with a poem that kind of closes the door. Um, uh, this house, which yeah. is now completely in ruins, mm -hmm. and imagine the lives of the people who lived mm -hmm. there, and they're gone now, but the place remains, yeah. do you know? So that was my arc. And then in the middle, um, there's about six or seven poems about race relations in Mississippi, mm -hmm. and about specifically Emmett Till. So that needs not to come right at the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. because that's just yeah. smacking yeah. the reader. No. Um, but it needed to have that arc, and then kind of fall away from that mm -hmm. arc into some more, mm, less completely traumatized material, yeah. you know. Yeah, that must have been an amazing experience to put it that together. It just was, it yeah. just was. Yeah. And not easy to publish, <laughs> because it's really expensive to I know, publish I know. photography but, you know, of that quality. Having you know. it out on our coffee table, and you know, it's really, 
Yeah, thank and people you. look at it. Oh, wow! Thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah, 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 I'm glad. I'm proud of that book. It's too heavy to carry around much. That's I'll true. say that yeah, for yeah, it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much yeah, for coming so by much. today. It's a pleasure. Right. Thanks right. for having me. All right.